Uh, my name's Joel Pohio. I live in Auckland. I've got four children. Now 43, I had my stroke uh, five years ago and it changed my life forever, basically, or the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. I was giving my youngest child, who was seven months old at the time, a shower before I went to work at about 6.30 in the morning. And then when I got him out, my whole left side of my body wasn't responding to what I wanted to do. I put him down onto the couch and then I woke up, well, I felt like I woke up on the ground and I wasn't sure what was going on. It was a real shock and surprise that, um, you know, that it was a stroke that he had suffered from. You know, I think my grandfather had a stroke, but he was, you know, mid-80s. Um, yeah, I guess it was a sense of disbelief about, you know, Joel at that stage was 38. My wife came running out of the bedroom because she could hear me slurring in my speech and she saw me lying on the ground unable to get up. So she called an ambulance straight away. We got rushed straight to Auckland Hospital where I had a clot removal procedure. The next day I had to have a emergency surgery to remove part of my skull to allow the brain to swell. And I'm lucky I don't remember all of this, that I woke up in rehab where I had to learn to walk again in a wheelchair for close to two years, still trying to recover. Time was a big factor. The effect of the stroke was killing my brain at a very fast speed. So by the time the onset of my stroke and I got to hospital, I had already had a third of the right side of my brain had died. And so obviously once it died, you're not getting that back. So that's the yeah, big thing is time. Yeah, just, just recognise that something is not right and don't delay your response. After a stroke, you are affected physically or um, mentally, if yeah, mental fatigue is quite a big thing. And there's a lot of patience involved for both sides. It's not just the, uh, the person who's had the stroke has got to, I suppose, adjust. It's the, the support group around you, family, to understand and realise that you're the same person, but you're also still, you're different as well. There's a group that we meet every second Friday and so there's a good group of people who share these stories and help everyone through their recovery. It's people who understand what you're going through basically because no one can actually understand it fully unless you've been or had a stroke. I think having others who've been through something similar, it is so critical that they have others supporting each other um, because your whole life has changed, your independence, your accessing, you know, as I say, whether you feel like you want to go here or take the kids there, you can't just instantly do all that sort of stuff. You really need to find these support networks to help you in your well-being, uh, particularly your mental well-being is critical. There's always called, say, a stroke victim and you had a victim mentality where it's negative, but a more positive spin is saying a survivor, you know, because that's what it is, you are. You can't deny that, because you're alive. We are alive. <laughs> the symptoms I had, I just couldn't understand, basically, and I knew that it, it affected one side of your body, and you had the face being sort of drooped, which I experienced. My arm wasn't m moving or working. My speech wasn't uh, impaired. Yeah, I just basically related it to a, heart, a sort of like a heart attack. Now, reflecting back, the fast uh, face, um, speech, take action or time, it's basically, it saves lives, yes. Mm. Joel's um, stroke wasn't simple or easily um, fixed, and so uh, the impact on his recovery was far greater um, and that did involve a huge amount of rehabilitation, occupational therapist, a lot of really hard work, so very long and an incredible amount of um, ongoing physiotherapy. It's very slow and frustrating because you meet other people who have had strokes and because every stroke is different, your recovery time is a lot different as well. So 
Some people can be back to walking within uh, no time, so that's frustrating seeing people make a faster recovery. But also as part of my recovering is taking time to realise and appreciate the small things because I could have died and that's, when, you know, you're not coming back from that. So let's put things in perspective, especially with my children, to uh, take time out for them. Um, Joel's son, he did a speech on Joel's stroke and he was quite detailed in all of the information, recognising you know, the various ways Joel reacted, the symptoms and I guess knowing or acknowledging the quick response um, that his mum did because that is, that is the key, is the rapidity of the um, response. It can happen anywhere to any person, any time, so and if you recognise the symptoms as quickly as possible you can get them the best medical help and it's which could make a huge difference to the, whether you survive or you don't and the amount of damage that can happen.